Now you might be asking yourself at this point, look, do we really need the Lagrange method? I mean, these other two problems that we've done, they could have been done with single variable calculus, just using some substitution tricks, just eliminating variables. No, you really do need Lagrange for some problems. Here is a fully three-dimensional problem that you need this method for. Let's say that we have three variables now, x, y, and z. And what I want to do is extremize a function, a quadratic function, x times y plus y times z minus x squared plus y squared minus z squared. And what we want is that x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 8. That is, these points have to lie on a, a sphere about the origin of radius square root of 8. Okay, let's do the Lagrange equations. Three variables, x, y, and z. First variable, x. Take the partials with respect to x. The partial of f with respect to x is going to give me y minus 2x. The partial of g with respect to x is going to give me 2x multiplied by lambda. We're going to get similar sorts of equations when we take the derivatives with respect to y, with respect to z. Now what do we have? We have three equations, four unknowns. Man, that does not look like fun. How are we going to solve that? Ay ay ay, that's a lot of algebra. Hey, wait. We know something about algebra when it's linear algebra, and this looks like a linear system. I'm going to pull out x, y, and z, put it into a vector of unknowns. I'm going to move everything over to the left-hand side, so the right-hand side is a vector of zeros, and everything else on the left, I'm going to pull out into a matrix of coefficients, of constants, where I'm, I'm absorbing that lambda into there. Now, here we are, ax equals b. b is equal to zero. I need a solution, x, y, and z, that is non-zero because of the constraint. That means this matrix A has to be non-invertible. When is a matrix non-invertible? Oh, that's right. A matrix is non-invertible when its determinant is zero. So in this case, what we need to do is take the determinant of that three by three matrix, set it equal to zero, then solve for the appropriate value of lambda. Now take a moment, go back, remember how to do that kind of stuff. I'm gonna do the hard work for you and factor that equation into minus four times quantity one plus lambda times quantity two lambda squared minus three. Set that equal to zero. That means that either lambda is equal to negative one or two lambda squared is equal to three. That is lambda is plus or minus square root of three halves. Okay, what does that mean? That means at those values of lambda and at only those values of lambda, you can get solutions to these equations in x, y, and z that uh, have a chance of satisfying the constraint equation. So what does this mean? This means we, we have to do things one case at a time. Let's say that lambda equals minus one. I substitute that value into the linear system and I solve it. I read off the first equation. It tells me that y is equal to zero. I read off the second equation in that linear system and it tells me that x plus 4y plus z equals 0. Since y vanishes, that means that x equals minus z. Now I substitute this into the constraint equation that g equals 0. And this tells me that x squared plus 0 plus x squared equals 8. That means that x is going to be plus or minus 2, y is going to be 0, and z is going to be equal to minus or plus 2. Okay, that is a pair of solutions, of critical points, but we're still not done because that's just case 1. And there are two more cases left to go. We have to look at what happens when lambda is plus or minus square root of 3 over 2. This is algebra. And we're not going to do this here. No. Why? Because in this case, x and z are plus or minus square root of 2 over 3 plus or minus square root of 3 halves. And y is quantity 2 plus or minus square root of 6 times x. Now, that's not much fun. In fact, it's really kind of awful because we have to substitute all these back into the function to figure out what are the maxes, what are the mins. Oh, it's pretty bad, but it is a thing that can be done. Lagrange's method is automatic. You can do it if you can do the algebra.